Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Did you ever have one of those days where things just weren't going according to plan? Today is that day for me. <laughs> oh. Doesn't matter, change of plans, we're at a new location. I didn't plan on being here at Black Swan Antiques in Palmyra, Pennsylvania, but we're here. We're gonna make the most of the day. It's a wonderful store. I always find good stuff. <laughs> Please let that be. Um, I'm looking for 30 items today. Yeah, and we're looking for vintage Christmas. We're looking for 30 vintage Christmas things. Whew. Let's get in here and see if we can do it, you guys. Wish me luck. Alrighty, guys, and here we are on the interior. You have seen it before, but there is the namesake, the mascot, the Black Swan. A wonderful store. I cannot recommend coming here enough. First out of the gate, we are seeing an older Howard Gale Santa. This one is marked at $95. He is in fantastic condition. You can tell the older ones by the more white um, composite painted face that is real wool that was used, of course, for um, the beard, the eyebrows, and mustache. Up next, we are seeing some Erskeberg, um, as made aware by Allison from Skeleton Keys in the Closet. Now I can't but help see them and definitely appreciate them. Though I will say, hello! <laughs> Though I will say, um, I do love a Nutcracker. Um, there's just nothing more Christmassy, Christmassy. <laughs> than a nutcracker um, and i do believe that he was an erzgerberg um i have become more familiar with the erzgerberg nutcrackers and you can really tell those by the eyes they typically are layered um meaning they have a painted white and then a separate piece that is attached for the pupil here we have a different vendor beautiful christmas display um there was some really i will say this there's there's a lot of very collector friendly prices in here um those little pixies sitting on the back the figurines i can never remember they're either anarcho or anesco i think they're anarcho um i know sometimes i've seen them labeled as left in i've seen them labeled as anarcho and anesco but I do think that they are, in fact, in Narcos. I love this little, what is it called? A candy blossom tree. You know, you just stick your little gum drops on there. I don't know how sanitary that really is. It kind of grosses me out. <laughs> oh, boy, get yourself together. Um, anyhow, we are now towards the back of the store. Um, you know, this video I'm really trying to dedicate to Christmas. We are, of course, in the month of December. Beautiful example of a ceramic tree. Unfortunately, it didn't have a base. We, of course, got the blow mold Santa and sleigh. And then I do see some putz houses. And the one that immediately jumps out at me is this brick house here in the back. And the reason it stood out is, one, because it is brick. Two, because it has, happy holidays, the banner there on the, or, pardon me, season's greetings there on the front. Now, it is missing an eve over the top. However, I really didn't mind because I thought it was unusual. I've asked this question before, and I'm going to say it again. How do we feel about the snow on our ceramic trees? I'm not the biggest fan because, unfortunately, it has a tendency to age in yellow. And, you know, yellow snow, we all know, is a danger. <laughs> I mean, it is a tree after all in the winter nature. It happens, um, you know, but still. I don't know that I really want to bring it into my home. Here we've got an example of some really cute flocked deer. I thought these were absolutely adorable. Um, I did not pick them up. I kind of regret not getting the white one. The white was a little unusual to me. Look at how sweet that little baby is. It's like, mama. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see this. It is a blinking Christmas tree with the box. I was trying to see what it said there on the bottom. It is, in fact, made in Japan. And it's quite heavy, too, I will say. Um, I was like, oh, please work, please work. It works! Oh, my gosh, isn't it adorable? I absolutely love this. I think it is absolutely darling. The fact that it lights up is amazing. It comes with its box. I did, in fact, pick that one up. 
Now, the Mr. and Mrs. Snowman here, these are absolutely adorable. I just, I declined to get them. Um, it just, the price point wasn't there for me as a reseller. Now, I do have one of these King Santas. Mine does not have the light kit. He is, I couldn't figure out what it was he would have been holding. He does, in fact, hold a, a green plastic Christmas tree. Um, a little Scrooge kind of... Um, Oh man, I can't remember the name of the va the face mugs. Um, but it was Department Fifty Six, so I you know I left him behind. Though it was a really nice example, I liked the actual glasses on him. Lots of charming little Hong Kong pieces here. Of course, the flock Santa, the drunk, the flock Santa, flock deer. Well, Santa was flock though too, though wasn't he? <laughs> drunk Santa, as I like to call him. Here are some giant blow mold candles. The price for these, you guys, it was fifty dollars for the set. That is a deal. Um, unfortunately, given how big the box would have been, um, shipping it would have proved to have been cost prohibitive. Um, so I did decide to go ahead and leave those behind. Now these like glittered candy canes, I don't know. They're kind of vintagey. They, they're in good condition. Um, I don't know. I kind of wanted to get them. And then I was like, Oh, once I open that bag, I'm going to have glitter everywhere. So I left it behind. Now here we've got an adorable little, this is from Inesco. He does have some paint on him, though I will say um, I did use uh, a magic sponge eraser and that came right up. And he's priced at only $6. He is darling. He is precious. He's saying, plan a kiss right here. <laughs> Playa. Alrighty, guys. I know, I know. I know. I said that I was going to make it a Christmas video, but I can't help it. This beautiful Marwall head um, sculpture. I absolutely love these. You know, most of the um, actual Marwalls are going to have their maker's mark here on the back. The easiest way to tell, though, is, is to look into the eyes. Um, they use that beautiful, like, ambery orange color um, as a highlight. Do you see? They're, they're just absolutely stunning. Um, ah. Oh, she got some paint fleck there on the cheek. Now she did not have her maker's mark on it, which was, it, it is a little unusual for them not to have a maker's mark, but the quality of the painted eyes leads me to believe that it is in fact an original Marwall. Um, these have a lot of really strong resale value, especially the Polynesian girls. They are going to be the ones with the flowers. Now that same vendor had a vintage Christmas corsage for only $2. That was an amazing deal. I am finding that it is harder and harder to find these pieces, so I did pick that up. Now here we have some Jewel Brights. They are in their original packaging. They are missing their cellophane cover. However, it is the Holy Family in the yellow lantern, and then in the red, green, and blue, it is the Three Wise Men. Now this was priced at $33, which is very collector friendly, especially for the Jewel Bright. I was having a hard time focusing. Um, unfortunately, the, I was a little concerned that it didn't leave a whole lot of room um, for me as on resale. So he did decide to go ahead and leave those behind. Um, though again, $33, I think that that's a fantastic deal, especially for in packaging. And those were in really good condition. Um, here we've got the Royal Copley Ivy vases. These are, I find these a lot. However, I did leave them behind. I think that you could use something non-traditional Christmas in a Christmas display. Now here we've got some red and green glass. I'm really feeling it. I'm digging it. Um, and the piece that I see first is this swung vase. Obviously being in green, I'm like, well, that's Christmas. Picking it up, I'm not really digging the brown that is in it. It does in fact have a sticker that says handmade, genuine, hand blown. Um, but it just didn't feel right, I guess, to me. It felt a little too, too thin and not in a good thin kind of way. Um, the other piece that I saw here in the back, look at that jewel green, very emerald green. Um, like it's like a wine glass brandy snifter, if you will. It's not a brandy snifter, but um, the color led me to think that it could have been Ellie Smith, though I don't know Ellie Smith ever made that. And surprise, there are these plastic jewels in them, and that freaked me out. I thought I broke it when I picked it up. 
Um, I think it's absolutely gorgeous, that color. I think it may actually be uh, Fenton, and the pattern on the top is called an optic pattern. Now, here we've got an example of some gorgeous blue. Look at the blue on that. Ooh, do you see the color reflection on the palm of my hand? It's a strange, unusual shape. You guys know by now it's a Viking. Thank you, George Antique Nomad, for uh, confirming that. <laughs> It's just an overly saturated blue. Viking is the king of those that color saturation, though I will say Ellie Smith, especially in their 60s through 80s, did a really good job achieving that same kind of uh, color saturation. So they kind of tricked me, but that bottom was making me think it was Viking. And of course, George confirming it. I mean, you can't get any better confirmation than that, can you? Um, now, this is, is a booth that I typically wouldn't necessarily go into because it's got a lot of the larger, heavier pieces, um, which is great, especially if you're looking to kind of like spruce up your home. Um, however, obviously with shipping, I can't really do that. However, they had some smaller Christmas items laid out and it immediately caught my attention. And you're going to see why, because what they did was they took non-traditional Christmas items like this galvanized pail, filled it with gold vintage Christmas ornaments, and it immediately became so eye-catching. I think it's a little rustic and crusty, but yet at the same, same time, there is an elevated sophistication to it. I really appreciate that. I have that deer that I just pointed to, that little blow mold one. I've got two or three of those, actually. I liked these ones. These were the harder plastic. He had his red nose. I declined to get any because, you guys, I have so many deer. It's ridiculous. <laughs> And again, look at this little sleigh carriage here, again, filled with all of the kind of like the shiny brights or the Polish ornaments. You know, it's so eye catching. It's non-traditional. Again, it's more of like the primitive home decor by using um, that sleigh carriage, yet filling it in with these glass ornaments. It's just there's an elevated uh, sophistication to it. I really appreciated that. Um, and again, these things typically are not something you would consider Christmas, but by putting something inside that is um, amazing job, kudos to the vendor. I just, I loved it. Um, it immediately caught my eye. As I said, I don't typically go into this booth because there are larger items, but they got me in there looking and I was excited to go in there. Um, there we've got a, like a harder plastic Santa blow mold. Again, you're seeing the pottery there filled um, with more glass ornaments. Here we've got like a silver or is it a mercury glass urn there filled again with more ornaments. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. A little enamel um, dish down there. Again, some more pottery that we've got filled with the ornaments. I just thought it was a great idea. And again, you know, here we've got some of the, this is more of like the primitive home decor, which is very popular um, throughout the state of Pennsylvania. And I don't know why, but I was immediately attracted to these pester and mul pestles and mul <laughs> I can't talk. Um, I was like, what are you going to do with that? I know what you could do. You can fill it with Christmas ornaments. <laughs> oh my goodness, Michael, get yourself together. Uh and again, you know, is it something that I am going to decorate with? No. Do I appreciate the time and the value that somebody put into that? Absolutely. Um, and there definitely was some time into it. Speaking of time, this guy has seen some. He does have a cloth face. It is hand painted. Um, it's very cupy esque I don't believe that's an official cupy, but I thought he was absolutely darling. And then I saw this creepy little spider. He's coming to get you, of course, the brooch. I mean, he qualifies. He does have a green abdomen there. I was checking out those Commodore, the rose candle uh, huggers, as well as the taper candle holders. Now, this vendor has Christmas. Um, I've been here before. Um, they sell Christmas year round. So I always get excited to go into here. This item was new to me. It is $8. I snatched that up. It is nearly in a mint condition and it does have the mercury glass with the um, silver foil leaves at eight dollars heck yeah i'm keeping it am i i don't know we're thinking about it i have a hard time letting those things go that were meant to be again disposable um, because somebody valued them enough for whatever reason to hold on to them so it kind of it speaks to the sentiment 
of it, if anything else. Um, again, the vendor is selling Christmas year round. Um, and, and I always love peeking in. Oh, look, clear glass, you guys. Beautiful example of how you can take clear glass and turn it into Christmas. Just fill it with the smaller, older vintage ornaments. Boom, there's a look. Or you could fill it with like the plastic Christmas, like some of the ivy in there. You know, you don't have to worry about watering it or it wilting or dying on you and having to get more. So that's, a, you know, again, another example. I see these little like carols here in the back with a little um, simple black painted dot eyes. I did decide to leave them behind, unfortunately. I don't know really know why. I kind of regret not getting them. Now, I have, in fact, pulled out some Holt Howard, um, relatively inexpensive. Oh, look, there's the other, another Inesco kit. I actually didn't see him in real life. He's there in the back by the girl with the large red hat and coat on there. I didn't notice him. That is, again, it's it's awesome um, that I get to rewatch this with you guys. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> little Christ psycho ceramics. He is definitely psychotic. He's had a day. Um, you know, I relate sometimes. We all do. Let's be honest. You know, here we've got the Christ. This is the five piece uh, breakfast set. So you've got Mr. and Mrs. Claus as egg cups, salt and pepper shakers and the Santa Bell. I did buy that before. Unfortunately, the bell was broken, but the price that I got on it was a steel. And then we do see the mercury glass pit picks. Um, now, as I was filming, I wasn't able to find the floor walker. So just bear with me. We are, in fact, going to be coming back to this booth for some of the things that I couldn't um, get out of the glass case. Here we've got some mercury glass garlands. Those are plastic, the red, green, and gold. Now these all gold are vintage as is the one in the back. However, I'm looking for more of the strange, the unusual colors, um, the blues, the pinks, the multicolors do very well. Um, solid gold, solid reds. Yes, those can do well, especially if they've got some length on them because it's so hard to find them. Um, a, like seven feet up. Um, so do keep your eye out for those. Um, here we've got this package topper. I'm unsure, judging by the back, if this was assembled as a hobbyist piece. Um, it definitely is vintage, so I do decide I put it back, but we are going to get it. Um, it very much reminds me of the Miro Star. Um, there were, they did do some pieces. Thank you, Randy, um, for turning me on. And John, John, John. John is Randy's husband and he collects Miro Star and I've been looking on eBay at them and I love them. They're not for everybody. I will say that, <laughs> but they are for me. Here we've got another example of some Jewel Brights and oh look, right next door is another set of the Jewel Light Holy Family and Three Wise Men set in the package. Now this one was marked at $26. Obviously this Wise Men crept out on them. Um, I decide that I am going to go ahead and get this pack, keeping in mind that there is an additional 20, was it 20% off? Or am I making that up? I think I got 10% off everything at this booth by using my debit card. That is another reason, and I want to make that very clear, that if you go to Black Swan and you have a credit debit card and you use your card as debit, you will get the cash check discounts just as you would if you were paying with actual cash or check. Love that. Um, here we've got some of the candles. Now these are actually metal. These are priced at $139 for the set. Again, the candle itself is metal. The wax drip is plastic. They are in really good condition. I did find one previously and it was a little rusted out down at the bottom. Not that I really minded it. Truth be told, I kind of liked it. But finding these in such good condition was a thrill. Um, they remind me very much of almost like a department store. Like, don't you see those in Macy's or Bloomingdale's? Speaking of something you might find in Macy's or Bloomingdale's or Saks, perhaps Nordstrom's are these gorgeous. Look at that one in the middle, the red Lordy. I don't know if that was a hobbyist made piece. I think that was manufactured. Obviously the other four trees are going to be the jewelry trees and they're absolutely gorgeous. Very eye catching. Something that caught my eye were these Victorian gla mercury glass ornaments. I, these are delicate. You guys, they've been around for at least, well, what? 1800s. 
at least 120 years, definitely longer than that. Now here I did find a look at him. Oh God, love him. It's been a hard day, hard night, hard night for Santa. It is a chalkware bank. Um, the fact that he's still in one condition because this is one of the ones where you'd have to break it to get it open. You see what I'm doing? Do you see what's behind him? Yeah, you do. It is the, yes, we've got this blow mold Santa here too. He's cute. $30, again, very average. That's actually a little bit lower than the ones that I've been seeing. However, he does not have a slot for his light kit. So again, just an indoor decoration. But it is, in fact, the Empire Blow Mold Santa Cookie Jar. Now, I did find the head before. $45 is very fair for this, by the way, um, especially with the hat. I to be honest with you, was very tempted at getting this for reselling, but I did find the hat and made like a huge assemblage out of it. Look, it's a sweater from Rydell High. <laughs> Everybody ready to do your hand jive? Born to hand. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not doing that to y'all. <laughs> oh yeah. And here we've got a pretty box of shiny brights in really good condition. Um, I love the packaging. The packaging alone is worth displaying. What I was trying to do was the balancing act. It was priced at $45. You may be like, that's high. Well, it would be high if it was just the solid colors. However, with that mica glitter on them and all of the variety of colors and patterns, $45 in a box in such good condition, definitely worth it. Here we have an example of some stained glass. Um, the red typically is going to be stained over amber. Um, we've got a little blue Fenton hobnail here. It is priced at $45, very fair. I would have liked to have gotten that. Um, and I know you might be wondering, well, why did you get that blue dish? Because, you know, blue was very popular, um, you know, in the 30s through the 60s. It, it kind of started to get out of fashion in the 80s, I would say, the adding blue. Um, but I I think that if you have a vintage Christmas display and you're not adding it a little a little blue, you're doing yourself a disservice. I'm telling you, add in just some little pops of blue everywhere and see if it doesn't just, it does something to it. I'm telling you. Just a little blue and with your very traditional green, red, maybe you put in a little gold, but I'm telling you, blue, yes, it's where you need it to be. So we are going to take a quick tour here because I'm like, oh, do you got any other fairy lamps in here? Are you hiding them back here on me? Beautiful lead glass, stained glass. Um, lamps there. Now here I do find a little home co Santa bank. He's an absolutely adorable. Love the paint. Look at that creepy teddy bear. He's like, Rrr. <laughs> Now, the same vendor that has the bank also had the very large Anna Lee reindeer. I've never seen the reindeer at this size, so I was a little thrilled to find him. Unfortunately, at the $78 price tag, I wasn't feeling that one. Um, what I have definitely have never seen is the large Anna Lee uh, giraffe. I'm kind of sad he didn't have his spots because I was like, what are you supposed to be? And I was like, you've got to be a giraffe. Um, he was priced accordingly, <laughs> so I left him there. Now here we've got a Frosty the Snowman. Um, it is obviously a ceramic light. It's priced at $32. I think that it's extraordinarily fair. Um, and I was tempted, especially with that little blue bird on the top of his hat to get him. Unfortunately, I've act I've sold two um, jack-o'-lanterns and they didn't do the best. So I was a little hesitant to want to get the snowman one. Though I will say, um, I find that you know, Halloween does very well, um, but Christmas does even better. And Santa has, <laughs> I should have ended the video with that Santa. I'm praying for you, Santa. Um, yeah. I also relate to that look. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got a beautiful honeycomb frosty there. Overall, really good condition. Obviously, the white has seen some aging. Um, not uncommon. We got a little, a few little Christmas knickknacks throughout here. 
Um, so I did, of course, want to spotlight them. And I love seeing the tiny little ornaments, but of course, I typically do turn those into fodder, whether it be for a wreath or an assemblage. And we are back in the booth here. Um, we are going through the mercury glass picks. I couldn't figure out if this said 15 or five. And then I was like, if it's 15, I, I, I can't justify getting them. Um, and then I was like, no, it says five. So I am going through here. I'm determining what ones um, I'm going to get. I do decline to get this first small bunch of red. Unfortunately, a lot of the red paint was missing. Um, so I kind of said no. Now, they knew um, the blue was eight. And I'm like, yeah, because it's rare. And I kept that. And it's already in a lovely arrangement. Um, this, again, the small, the red, it just wasn't doing it for me. It wasn't impactful um, enough to warrant purchasing. However, these silver, yeah, there is a blown ball, but there are five picks within the strand, or there's five strands within the pick. Um, so I do pick that up. And then I decide that I'm going to get all of these large gold ones, especially at $5. You know I am. The small little like ambery gold I do decline to get. Look at that. Isn't it majestic? Yes, it is. And again, I did say earlier, um, this hobbyist piece, we are going to get it. <gasps> yes, we did, in fact, find a fairy lamp. And I picked it up. Yes, it's a Fenton iridized. It is the Lily of the Valley pattern. Um, and of course, we've got these reversible candlesticks. They are both votive, and you can flip them and turn them into a taper candle. Um, the fairy lamp was 99 and I did get 20% off, and the votive holders were 30 for the set. And I do have my flashlight, and I was just making sure because some of the newer Fenton doesn't not, unfortunately, glow. These do, and boy, do they glow. All right, guys, we are getting close to the end of the video, but before we wrap it up outside, I do pick up a few more things. Um, I do get these three wise men, the double glow. I do get this hobbyist piece. It's these mice. I, it's weird, odd. How could I not? Um, you know, I think it's done very well. It was $4. Of course I'm going to get it. <laughs> and we've got these set of little odd choir boys with the very elongated, they're very stylized um, with the necks. So I do decide to get them. And I did have um, the vendor pull out the, the, the brooch, but it doesn't glow. All right, guys, going to see you outside. Well, guys, there you have it. Another successful trip at Black Swan <laughs> Antique Mall here in Palmyra, Pennsylvania. Always a great time. Oh. Okay, so I switched locations to get through the outro. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I think you could hear me. Um, it was always a good time, Sandy. It's always a pleasure to see you, lady. Um, continued success. Happy holidays to everybody at Black Swan Antique Mall in Palmyra, Pennsylvania. Um, always a joy. So until next time, you guys, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.